What a elite. Is this keyboard worth the $170 price of admission? I'm Rio Gian and welcome to the channel. Front really reminds me of the Black Widow X. Now that I mention it, I think this is basically the Black Widow X that I wanted them to make when I made my review of the Black Widow X. I'll put a link to that video down in the description below for you guys to check out. Anyways, I dig this font. It looks very professional, which is quite odd coming from a Razer branded keyboard that is mainly geared towards gamers. I still find it interesting that Corsair is making their keycaps have this huge font where the keyboard was more professional to begin with. I guess that discussion is probably meant for another video. The one thing that I have to give Razer credit for is that they actually improve on everything I said was wrong about the Black Widow X. And there's the price bump of $10, but honestly, I think that's fair. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I do think that the pricing on this keyboard is fair with the amount of features you are getting. So going back, I do like that they included the dedicated media keys, the volume scroll wheels on the right. This is lifted from the Huntsman Elite. It was a good idea to lift this from the Huntsman Elite. Huh. Now that I think about it, since this keyboard is after the Huntsman Elite, this keyboard is based on the Huntsman Elite, which is based on the Black Widow X in terms of the frame, so we come full circle? Or am I just crazy? And I also like the RGB logo when you're not using the wrist rest. Lastly, I dig the floating key design because it makes the keyboard easier to clean and I'm just a fan of the look. Kale has came a long way and I think that Kale at this point, they have a fan base. They're making switches that are more than just cherry clones. This is great news because with more competition means more benefit for the consumers. When I look at the switch on this keyboard, I immediately think about those Kale box switches. Whether or not these switches are made by Kale is something that I'll leave it to the comment section down below. Whatever the case is, I think that people are either on one side of the fence where they just accept the switches and they will defend the switch because they're a fan of the brand or they hate the switch and hate the brand for cheaping out. Personally, I'm interested in seeing someone with a Razer switch keyboard that have the keyboard for a very long time. So if you have like a first gen Black Widow with those kale green switches, let me know how that keyboard's doing. In terms of the brand, to be honest, I don't care. As long as the product itself is good, if these kale switches are proven to last longer than the MX Blue, then I'm all for that. This keyboard has the CoStar stabilizer, which is disappointing because the Black Widow X has cherry stabilizers. I was really hoping that they would use cherry stabilizers because this is a floating key design. I mean, the K70 uses cherry stabilizers. If you're gonna copy them, then go all the way and use cherry stabilizers. Objectively, one isn't better than the other. So I'm not saying that you're wrong if you like CoStar stabilizers, but personally, I find them annoying and hard to deal with. I was really hoping that they used cherry stabilizers, but they did not. Oh well. The wrist rest game here is very strong because it's plushy, it's soft, it's magnetic. The only thing that's missing is that it isn't RGB. So if you want to swing for an RGB wrist rest, then there's always the Huntsman Elite. This is one thing that I wish the K70 would do. There are pads on the bottom so the wrist rest would stay still during heavy gaming and typing section. The magnets could be better, so I guess that's something they can look into when they're making the next version, which I'm pretty sure there's going to be a next version. On the back of the keyboard, they actually did a lot of improvements over the standard Black Widow and Black Widow X. There are two types of feet so that you can find the angle that you are most comfortable with. Then there are cable management slots so that you can route cables to match your setup. The rubber pads on the keyboard does a really good job at keeping the keyboard planted. There are both USB and audio pass-through which is a personal favorite because I would typically use the USB pass-through a lot. I wouldn't say the same for 
for the audio pass through, but I'm sure for those that do use them will appreciate the fact that they're still here. For the cable itself, it comes with this plastic cable management piece. The cable is thick and braided, and the USB tips are gold. I think they did a really good job in this department. Besides the software it kept crashing during the update, this is one of the more user friendly software because I changed the settings the way how I would like without having to read the manual or look up something online. Another awesome thing about this software is that there's a large community behind it where I would constantly find new lighting profiles to set the keyboard. Honestly, I believe that most people would spend this kind of money on this keyboard. They don't spend it for the hardware alone. I do think a lot of the money does go to the software. Just because the keyboard is RGB does not mean that it's going to have the same lighting settings and lighting customization as some of the bigger name manufacturers like this one. In terms of the software, I do think you are getting your money's worth because there's a really big community behind this and you often get updates which makes your keyboard better. This is one of the more comfortable keyboards to type but I would not say it's love at first type. I do like how much lighter the switch is now and I do like the sound it produced but I didn't instantly fall in love with it. The travel is buttery smooth and the transition is great to the point where I do feel like I'm flying through this keyboard. This is a very satisfying keyboard and it's something that I would recommend people trying out but it doesn't quite get the love at first type rating simply because it's just not as satisfying as I would like it. If you're someone who's been around the block with mechanical keyboards then you might know what I mean. If you're new to mechanical keyboards and you're willing to pay top dollar for a keyboard that has everything then I would highly recommend this keyboard. Like I said before, if you're willing to pay top dollar for a keyboard that does everything, then this and the K70 are two keyboards that I know basically does everything. These keyboards are like the Note series in terms of keyboards, where the keyboards are made for users that want to check every single boxes. In some ways, I think this keyboard have more features than the K70, like the audio pass-through and that excellent wrist rest. For the price of $169.99, this is a tough pill to swallow, but if you're in the market for a keyboard that checks all of the boxes, and you're willing to spend the cash, then I would say this is one of the few keyboards that meet this requirement. Before you write me off as some kind of Razer fanboy, I'll leave a link below to my review of another Razer keyboard, one that I did not particularly like. As of this video, I am sponsored by my wallet, and based on the rank that I'm going, I'm probably gonna be sponsoring myself for quite some time. So if you want to buy this keyboard and support me at the same time, I'll leave a link to this keyboard down below where you can do that. If you made it this far into the video and you still haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to become part of the mighty notification squad. And as always, you guys stay awesome.